Namaste Yogi and welcome back to my channel. This is a yoga flow that will help us connect to the air element. This is a yoga flow that will take us through heart openers, chest openers and shoulder openers, but will be essentially focused on our breathing. Because what better way to connect to the air element than through our breath? The breath or pran or life force is vital for us to strengthen this connection to the air element. This is also a great practice if you're feeling disconnected in any way. Because after all, the air that we breathe is the same air that all living creatures on this planet breathe. And our breath is what helps us to unite our physical and spiritual existence. The air element is also associated with creativity and inspiration. So let's all use this practice to stoke, to ignite the creativity within us and to tune into the creative potential that we have. Great, so we will start in a comfortable seat and make sure that you have an upright back. So creating that pathway for the energy to run up and down that central energy channel that is our spine. I invite you to bring one hand and then the other on top of it at your heart center. And just softening all the muscles around your eyes, begin to notice your breath. Just taking natural breaths in through the nose and out through the nose, giving each breath the attention that it deserves. And maybe you feel your heartbeat through the skin of your palm. Allow each heartbeat to bring in more love into this heart space and each heartbeat to allow that love to grow beyond your physical body. And I'm going to share something that I read today that I really liked. It said, a shallow breath ties nerves into knots and deep breaths untie heartbeats and passing thoughts. So on that note, feeling the heartbeat here, let's start to deepen our breath a little. Without straining or pushing, just gradually deepening our breath. And you can bring one hand to the belly, one hand on the chest. And begin by sending the breath all the way down into the belly. Allow the belly to expand fully. And as you exhale, empty out completely and feel the belly button drawing in towards the spine. And we're going to continue this way, but now as we inhale, we're going to inhale into the belly and continue inhaling so that we fill up the ribs, the sides of the ribs and the chest. And as we exhale, allow the chest to drop, the ribs to tuck in and then the belly button to drop in towards the spine. So it's as if you were filling up a tank. So starting from the bottom, filling it up all the way to the top. Let's take two or three more at our own pace, inhaling into the belly, the ribs, the chest, maybe even the collarbone start to rise. And then as you exhale, starting from the collarbones, the chest, the ribs, and the belly, drop. Last one here together. Good. Keeping the eyes closed, bring your palms to touch in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra or prayer gesture. A beautiful place to arrive to honor the divine in us. Bring your awareness to the skin of your palms, uniting the passive and active natures. And we're going to open our practice by chanting the mantra OM together just once. So feel the vibrations of this mantra resonating in your heart space and then growing beyond your physical body, connecting you to everything around you. Inhale for OM. Take 
take a big breath in and out through the nose, tuck your chin and slightly bow your head and begin to blink your eyes to open. Namaste. Bring your hands wherever they lie comfortably on your knees or on your thighs. Allow the shoulders to drop and we're going to start with the first pranayam which is Ujjayi Pranayam or ocean waves breath. So for this, you're inhaling and exhaling through the nose by slightly constricting the throat muscles. So as you inhale, imagine uh, steaming, um, inhaling steam from your mouth. So, but with your lips together. And as you exhale, imagine fogging up a mirror like so. But with your lips together again, okay? So it should sound like the ocean waves or even the wind and make a very, very soothing sound that we can tune into during our practice. So breathing with sound like that. Don't worry if this doesn't really come very easily in the beginning. It will come with practice. But try as much as you can. If it's too much, then you can always come back to your deep breaths in and out through the, through the nose. Just making sure that the breaths unfold from deep within. Okay? So tune into that Ujjayi breath once again. And then we're going to make it to our balasana or child's pose and begin with our asana practice. So toes touch, let your hips sink towards your heels, extend the arms forward, inhale as you extend through the sides of the waist, lengthening the spine and then exhale, let the forehead, the chest melt towards the floor. If bringing the forehead down to the floor is not very comfortable, you can take a block or any book or anything that can help you elevate a little bit and place the forehead on top of that block. Or if you're comfortable without, you can just allow the center of your forehead or the space between your eyebrows to touch the floor. And we're going to take this moment to set an intention either for the practice or for the day or even for our life in general. To think of anything positive that you want to grow more or connect with more. And maybe something around the theme of letting go, being open to new perspectives or allowing love to grow within your heart. For me today, it's going to be I am intimately connected to the cycle of the air. Whatever you choose, repeat it to yourself with trust a couple of times. And then gaze forward with your next inhale and come into tabletop position, knees under the hip bones, wrists under the shoulders and we're going to move into baby looks from here so we're going to shift our hips all the way to the left side as we draw the left shoulder towards the left hip and maybe we gaze towards that left heel and then moving on to the other side move the hips all the way to the right draw the right shoulder towards the right hip Keep the belly soft and look towards your right heel. So baby looks, just like babies, <laughs> try to tune into that sense of curiosity, of wonderness, of openness towards new perspectives. And feel that stretch and that opening in the sides of your spine, of your waist. And come back to the center neutral spine from here we're going to come into ashtanga namaskara or chest and chin position shift your shoulders way past your wrist keep the lower belly engaged and keeping the elbows close to our body we're going to keep the hips raised but bring the chest and the chin down to the mat 
So think of lifting the shoulder tips off away from the floor. Inhale and exhale, draw the navel in towards the spine. And then slowly slither forward. You can move your knees back and come onto the belly for Bhujangasana, Cobra pose. For this, let's bring our hands right under the shoulders. Elbows close to the body and legs can be slightly apart or toes can meet. But keep, keep the tops of the feet grounding down firmly into the ground. And lift the kneecaps, roll the thighs in. Inhale, press into the ground with your hands. Peel the chest off the floor. Keep length in the back of the neck. Let your heart shine forward and exhale down. We're going to do this once again, but this time hovering the hands off the floor. Inhale, peel the chest off the floor. Hover the hands off the floor, activating the back muscles. And exhale all the way down let's do that once again you can either keep the hands down or hover them off the floor pull the shoulders away from the ears and lower down nice and slow uh, good from here let's bring our arms alongside the body so stretch out the arms to the sides of the body legs can still be slightly apart and we're going to lift the chest and the arms. Inhale. Draw the shoulder blades down towards the base of the spine. Reach the fingertips back. And you can even join me by lifting the legs off the floor. Really activating the back muscles here, but still pulling your heart forward. And exhale all the way down. This is a great, great exercise to strengthen and activate the back muscles let's do that once again inhale to lift everything up off the floor reach the fingertips away heart forward legs are nice and long i'm not bending my knees keeping my legs nice and long and exhale all the way down nice job let's bring our hands under the shoulders tuck the toes under and lift ourselves up to come into tabletop position and just take an active child's pose so let's keep the toes tucked under push the hips back let's give that back a nice stretch after all that activation in the back muscles and then come back to tabletop position we're making our way into the first downward facing dog adha of our practice so walk your hands slightly forward, spread the fingers wide, press into the ground with your hands, actively pushing away from the ground, tuck the toes, lift the knees, keeping the knees bent. First, think of pushing the hips up and back. Press the thighs back and actively press into the ground with your hands. Lengthen the sides of the waist, pull the lower belly in towards the spine. Think of externally rotating the upper arms to create space for your neck. And take one or two breaths here. Inhale to look forward, come onto your tippy toes, bend the knees and step your right foot in between the hands. Drop the back knee and lift your chest off your thigh. Now from here, I want you to think of zipping up, okay? So we're not collapsing the energy down towards the ground. Instead, think of zipping up from the pelvic floor up towards the navel, okay? Drawing the navel in, lifting the energy up through the spine, reach the arms nice and high towards the sky. Two or three breaths here. Full body awareness here. You have a 90 degree angle in the right knee. Your heart is lifting. The shoulders are away from the ears. Turn the palms out and dive your hands back. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms together. Open up through the chest. Lift the heart as you pull the knuckles towards the back heel. Think of really opening up through the chest through the heart space, inviting more love, 
sending out more love, lifting the heart a little higher. And then take your time to slowly release and bring the hands to frame your foot. From here, lift the back knee and spin the heel down, bringing that back foot into a 45 degree angle. The front knee is in a 90 degree angle and we're going to cartwheel our arms to come into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Now, we want our knee to be right over the ankle. Knee is tracking over the second toe. So it's not caving in or out, okay? Nice and centered. Your arms are in one straight line, shoulders away from the ears. So the air element teaches us to let go of the past. For me in this posture, I like to think of my arm at the back, like the past. So I still have a past, I'm not letting it drop, I'm still learning from it, but I'm gazing forward, being open to new possibilities, fresh perspectives, and keeping a soft gaze here. And Let's not let our ego pull us forward, but instead, let's stay centered within our body, within our life. Nice job. Inhale to reach the arms up. Reach the fingertips towards the sky, straighten the legs, and come back into Veera Badrasan B. See if you can go a little lower this time. Feel that strength through the legs. Chest is still open. Nice job. Reach the arms up and bring the hands to your waist. Turn the right foot in and left foot out. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. So lift that back heel, turn all the ten toes towards the left and drop that back knee, making sure the left knee is over the ankle this time. Good. So once again, think of zipping up from the pelvic floor up towards the navel. Keep lifting up through the heart and reach the arms up. Fingertips are reaching towards the sky, but the shoulder blades are still drawing down towards the base of the spine. Staying with your breath, letting that breath unfold from deep within. Turn the palms to face out and swim your hands back. Interlace the fingers, press the palms together, lift through the heart, expand through the collarbones. Imagine your collarbones smiling and reach the fingers towards that back heel. Feel that expansion through the chest, through the heart space. And then slowly releasing the hands, bring the hands to frame your uh, left foot. Lift the back knee, spin the heel down so that it's at a 45 degree angle and cartwheel your arms to come into Veera Badrasan B, warrior two. So same thing, arms in one line, soft gaze towards the front. So this is a great asana or posture that teaches us to be strong and firm through our foundations, but still keeping that openness, that expansion through the chest. Let's take one more breath here, staying strong through the legs and then inhale to straighten the legs, reach the arms up. So I like to reach the arms up because it's like lifting up the spirit and then come back into Veera Bhattrasan B, warrior two. Just a couple of breaths here, making sure that you have that 90 degree angle, that you're going a little lower maybe. Nice job, extend the arms up. Hands come to your waist and then heel toe your feet back together. So feet can be slightly apart or they can be together. See what feels comfortable for you. We're going to do a side stretch. Inhale to reach the arms up. Interlace the fingers. Index fingers reach up towards the ceiling. Inhale here. And equally pressing into both your feet, lean towards your right side, hips go towards the left. One more breath here, open up through the chest. And then come back to center, inhale to reach up. Press equally into both your feet, hips go right, lean towards your left. Keep the chest open, heart is lifted. And return to center. 
and bring the arms next to the body. Step to the front of your mat and we're going to reach the arms up, linking breath and movement. Exhale to fall forward. So let the heart guide the way. Let the heart guide you forward and down. You can keep the knees bent like I'm doing. Fingertips of palms reach down and drop the head. Inhale, take a half lift. So draw the shoulders back. Let the heart shine forward. You can keep a soft bend in the knees. Hands come down and step both your feet back. Chaturanga. So those who have Chaturanga in their practice can go ahead for the full version or join me in dropping the knees to take a modified version. Shoulders forward, elbows close to the body, gaze forward but down. Draw the belly in and lower down. And then lower all the way down. Hands are next to our floating ribs now for Urdhva Mukhashvanasan, upward facing dog. Bring the feet slightly closer. Engage the legs by lifting the kneecaps, spiraling the thighs in. Press into the ground with your hands, with your, the tops of the feet, and lift everything up. So think of pulling the heart through the shoulders, drawing the shoulders back, drawing the belly in, drawing the inner thighs in together, and then drop the knees, Tuck the toes and let's lift up into downward facing dog. Actively pressing away from the ground. Lift the tailbone nice and high. Take one more breath here. Inhale to look forward. Bend the knees and step both your feet forward. Take a half lift. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Pull your heart forward. And as you exhale, Fold forward, drop the head. Inhale to reach back up. Palms touch, look towards your thumbs. And exhale, come back to heart center. Arms come by the sides of the body. We're going to move into warrior three now. A little bit of a balancing posture. So we're going to start with the right leg. Peel the right heel off the floor. Keep zipping up, remember? Pulling the energy up. And then slowly start to reach the knee towards your chest as you raise the arms up. Find your balance here. Bring the palms to touch in front of your heart center and keeping the thumbs connected in the center of your chest, start to lean forward. Draw the belly in as you draw the right toes towards the back. So same thing, you want to keep shining your heart forward and pulling the shoulders back. Try to square your hips so that the right knee is facing towards the mat. Let's take one more breath. And bend that right knee to come back into that knee to chest position and release. Nice job. Let's do that on the other side. So bring your arms next to the body and then peel the left heel off the floor, zipping up the energy up through the center line of the body. Left knee towards your chest. Bring your palms to touch in front of your heart center. Draw the shoulders away from the ears and start to lean forward, keeping those connected thumbs in the center of your chest at your sternum. Extend the left leg back. Heart forward, shoulders back. One more breath. And slowly bend that knee, bring it back towards the chest and lower that foot. So one side is always a little more challenging than the other. For me, it was clearly the second leg. But it's good to notice these things and we learn so much about our body through every practice. Now let's step together, feet together, arms by the side. Inhale to reach up through the arms. Exhale to fold forward. Be aware of every breath, drop the head. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands come down, step both your feet 
down. Nice job. We're going to lower down into Chaturanga. This time I will demonstrate the full version. So shift the shoulders way past your wrist. Come onto your tippy toes. Bending the elbows. Gaze forwards. And then push away from the floor. Lift the heart. Untuck the toes. Press down through the tops of the feet. Let the heart come forward. Maybe you can even open up through the chest, the, the throat and look up and then drop the knees nice okay from here we're going to move on to the belly so shift the shoulders forward and lower down in any way that you wish and then keeping a hip width distance in between the knees we're going to bend the knees for dhanurasan or, or bow pose reach the hands back and see if you can grab onto the ankles Okay, I'm just going to adjust my mic a little. Good, so hold on to your ankles, flex your feet and kick your heels back as your chest starts to elevate. Draw the shoulders back, shoulder blades in together. You can stay right here if this is enough for you, but make sure that your knees are not opening up to the side like that. You want to roll the thighs in. If you want to take it one step further, point to the toes and lift the toes as if you want to touch the ceiling with your toes so that the thighs lift off. Keep pulling the ankles towards you but pushing the ankles away from you. And you can add a little bit of a rocking motion by activating the back muscles. Keep the heart shining forward. Feel that opening through the chest. And then take your time to slowly roll down onto the belly, extend the legs. Bring your hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes, lift yourself up. Take an active child's pose just to stretch out the back. And we're going to move into one more back bend. which is Ustrasan or camel pose. So come to kneeling and we're going to keep the toes tucked under. So if you have camel in your practice already and you want to take it deeper, feel free to untuck the toes, but I'm going to demonstrate it starting with the toes tucked. Now for this, we're going to bring our hands to support the lower back, drawing the shoulders away and back, shoulder blades in towards the midline. So we want to lift the chest and think of drawing a line with your nose towards the ceiling. Okay. Now a game changer in any back bend is to keep the back of the neck long and think of drawing the shoulder blades towards the base of the spine. Okay. So let's think of that, keeping all of that in mind. Inhale, elongate the back of your neck, elongate the spine, draw that line towards the ceiling. Lift the heart up, draw the shoulder blades down. If this is enough for you, you'll stay right here. If you want to take it to the full camel pose, bring both the hands to your heels. Now, once you have your heels, you want to lift the heart up. Really imagine a string pulling your heart towards the ceiling or even towards the clouds. And then slowly you can push your pelvis slightly forward, but but most importantly, keep lifting the chest. Now, if you want to take it further, you can untuck the toes and lift the heart a little higher, look up towards the ceiling. Breathe, feel all that space that you're creating between each rib. Let's take two more breaths here. And then to come out of it, slowly start to bring your hips towards your heels. And we're going to take a counter stretch. So tuck the toes if they're untucked. Grab onto your ankles or your heels. And we're going to break the crown of the head. So this space here, the flat space of um, the skull to the floor. As close as you can to your knees. And then lift the tailbone up. So you should feel a very, very nice stretch in the back of your neck and in the upper back. Lift the sit bones and breathe. And 
and then slowly roll back, bringing the hips back towards your heels and lift yourself up. Nice job. Let's cross our shins. And we're going to bring our legs in front of us. Actually, I'm going to do one more stretch, which is amazing for our shoulders just before we lie down. So for that, we will bring our knees right under the hip bones and stretch our arms forward. It is the puppy stretch. Okay, from here, inhale to lengthen the spine and exhale. Try to melt your forehead towards the floor. Once again, if you need a little lift, you have your blop. You want to keep the elbows off the floor and really stretch out the arms. And think of drawing the lower belly in, but allowing the chest to melt towards the floor. So you should feel a really nice stretch in the shoulders. If you want to take it one step further, of course, you take off the block and bring the forehead down onto the mat. You can even slide the hands a little further and bring the chin down. And another option here is to keep the block and bring both the elbows on top of the block, join the palms and allow the shoulders to open up here. So you can either use one block under each elbow or just use one lengthwise and bring the connected thumbs towards the back of the neck. So this feels really good in the shoulders, in the sides of the shoulders. And just allow your chest to melt down. So whichever variation you've taken, just see if you can reconnect to your breath and maybe send your breath to wherever in the shoulders, in the upper back, you're feeling that sensation. Let's stay here, two more breaths. Staying aware of your breathing, of your body, letting your breath bring you back into the present if your mind starts to wander. And then stretching out your arms, lift yourself up and take away the block if you're using one. And now let's cross our shins and come to our supine position. So we're going to hold on to the backs of our thighs and slowly start to roll back, extending the legs, extending the arms alongside the body. And just wiggle your knees from side to side, allowing anything, any gripping, any tension to melt away. And then come to some stillness. Allow the toes to drop to the sides. And patiently, just allow and give permission to your breath to come back to its natural rhythm, letting go of the ujjayi breath, if you were practicing it, letting go of those deep breaths even. Just your natural breath in through the nose and out through the nose. And as your body slowly starts to melt into the stillness, look at your breath as a form of meditation. Your breath being the only movement that you're connecting to at this moment. Feeling each breath and being aware of the journey of your breath in and out through the nose into the body and out through the nose into the environment around us. Tune into this beautiful feeling of being soft throughout the body, throughout the muscles of the face. Softly melting into the floor through the back, but still feeling light through the front of the body. And noticing through our breath that the air that is inside of us and the air that is around us and surrounding us is just the same. And as we breathe in and out, we're not holding on to any breath for too long. 
And this is what the air element teaches us. We can live only by letting go of the breath to allow more space for the new, for the fresh energy. So I invite you to travel back to your intention and bring your awareness back into your heart space and imagine that intention being planted as a seed in your heart space and knowing that it has everything it needs to grow from here. Take two or three more breaths here. Feel the touch of the air on your skin. Feel the sensation of each breath in your nostrils. And notice how the breath in your nostrils is connected to the breath in your chest, in your belly. And then slowly start to come back to your physical body. You're free to stay a bit longer if you wish. And then bring a little bit of movement in your toes, in your fingertips. Be aware of that air that is surrounding you, of the space around your body. And then take your time and slowly and gently bend the knees and roll over to the right side of the body. And take a couple of breaths in this fetal position. Just noticing your breath even here, staying present. And whenever we're ready, we're going to use our hands to press ourselves up to come into a comfortable seat and come into any comfortable seat. And take a second to feel your breath, to notice your breath, to feel your body. And I invite you to bring once again your hands on top of your chest, on top of your heart space. Feel that love for yourself, that gratitude for yourself for making it to the mat today, for practicing and for feeding your mind, your body and your soul with love. Join your palms, bow your head. Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Have a great day.